You were about to enter in another dimension, in the dimension where dreams come true, when theories are real and where the paranormal is normal. Welcome to the Moonlight Zone. Hello, I'm your showrunner, Babel of Bazaar, and today we will showcase you five mysterious caves with an explanation about weird Pokemon. Two of them are the mythological Ultra Beasts that you know very well. The first case is a tape found in Hydro Foundation dump room. Be careful, this might shock you, because the material was never seen before in the TV. The material in question is the... Hello Grant, we are pleased to announce that we found a brand new Uter Beast wandering the skies. The local witnesses call this phenomenon as the rod, a flare of light that suddenly appears in the cameras. However, it's not a supernatural phenomenon. It is actually a living creature from the Ultra Garden, another animation found thanks to an ultra warm hole. We already collected some information about this entity, ring far secret level. Please observe carefully the pictures. Some cautions you should be aware. Please, do not see directly for it more than 30 minutes and 34 seconds. It can cause blindness or permanent vision damage, and neurons burn too. Some previous grunts had their eyes melted accidentally. The effect is currently irreversible, but thankfully, they're still alive and working for us. Even with sunglasses, its flames are still too bright to be looked at. Instead, we recommend you to use your employee's helmets all the time while dealing with this creature. You should now investigate why this creature is suddenly burning house around you, Nova. Be careful and good luck in your journey. Best regards, Hyder Foundation. No, that is spooky. Thankfully, we have people working to protect us. Next film was sent by a famous professional in paranormal incidents. It will relate incidents and creatures related to the recent phenomena of night crawlers and skinwalkers. So when taking on the idea of turning a cryptid into a Pokemon, my first thought went to one of my favorite cryptids, that being the Fresno Nightcrawler. It's a creature that's kind of existed on the ambient sound of cryptids, but doesn't really get a lot of spotlight, so I thought, why not start there? It feels like it really fits the prompt at being a spooky little guy. But the question is, how do you turn something so simple into a Pokemon? That kind of became the main crux of the challenge for this video for me. Because you see, it's a lot easier to take away something from a design, kind of streamline what your inspiration is, than it is to kind of just add on to it. So for this design, it was going to be all adding on. It's a very simple concept with just a pair of legs. How do you make that dynamic? How do you give that an energy to it? So I went in with a couple different concepts and ideas for what I wanted to do, and at the same time, kind of no concept and no idea. I didn't know anywhere that I wanted to go with this, so I just started going. Started kind of drawing and seeing where things went. I decided that I wanted to keep and maintain that weird little loosey-goosey type of run that Toad School has kind of co-opted in recent Pokemon games, and kind of utilize that same type of element, but going even simpler. I created this loose, almost wormy body that allowed it to run in such a way that still maintained the initial prompt. I wanted to give it just a little bit of something, so I gave it this mouth that I thought would be fun and provide some personality to the Pokemon. And while I was doing so, I started to kind of rework what I was going for. I thought that top line almost looked like a top row of teeth, and if it almost looks like a top row of teeth, why not just go fully with that? It became this chittering little mouth of a Pokemon that ran around kind of making noise as it did so. It almost began to feel almost like working with an unknown type of concept. 
you know, unknown being very simple, very inspired just by letters, whereas this one's inspired by just a pair of legs. And I feel like I really, really like the direction that it ended up going. Even throwing on those red eyes that I know the Fresno Nightcrawler doesn't have, but it just felt like it worked here. It gave it just that bit of extra oomph, which really allowed a personality to shine through in this design. And I'm feeling like it works. It's not a ton of stuff that's different. There wasn't a ton to add on or get overly complicated with this design, but still, I feel like it's a pretty strong one. One that can, pardon the pun, but stand on its own. I'd love to run across this guy just kind of searching throughout the forest outside of maybe a suburban area and just kind of spot this guy or even <laughs> catching one going through trash cans and watching it just kind of skitter off in that weird little loosey-goosey noodly run that it looks like it's doing here. And so I'm happy to introduce you to Bounder, the walking Pokemon. Pretty simple design, I went with a normal type just because it feels like that kind of fits here. For the shiny, I went with inverse colors, almost giving that Halloween-y type of vibe for the season. Orange eyes, black legs, and it also really amps up the idea that this almost feels like an unknown. I'm pretty happy with it, and I think it would be a joy to have on my team, just even as goofy as it appears. For the evolved form of this Pokemon, I wanted to go with another creature from Folklore, which is a creature that's actually gotten a lot of reputation in modern depictions, and that is the Skinwalker. From shows like Skinwalker Ranch and just episodes of Lost Tapes and all these different media outlets that have really taken advantage of this story element, I thought, why not go with this for the adaptation of the evolution of this Pokemon? Whereas in the previous design, I was trying to figure out how to go more complicated, on something so simple, this design actually had the opposite issue. Rather than having something simple, I actually had something that had so many different variations in the folklore of this monster that I kind of didn't know where to go. I stuck with some of the basic elements of it in that it's able to mimic the shape and sounds of other creatures around it. So I thought, what if we made that kind of the whole design? What if we made that just the base motif of everything we're going for? So I thought, if this Pokemon are going to mimic a Pokemon, why not pick something like Charizard? Something big, something scary, something iconic that most things that are looking to hunt this Pokemon for being so weak and fragile, it would use that to scare them away. So I have it using one of its arms to kind of formate this Charizard-esque head out of those same little wormy dealies that we saw in the previous evolution. In this form, I see it having a lot more control over these. Rather than just using them to run and just scamper about, it's using them to fend off enemies. No longer satiated with the idea of running away, it now utilizes the ability of mimicry to make other Pokemon forced to run away from it. So it's moving these tendrils into shapes that it knows are going to be terrifying for any that come into contact with it. In this instance, it's using a Charizard head. I see this playing a lot into the ability of the Pokemon. I don't know what that is quite yet, but something mimic based, maybe the ability for it to mimic the typing of Pokemon around it. For that reason, it's a normal type and we'll see that as we get to the end of the process here in that a lot of normal types like Ditto, Porygon, things like that tend to have these weird and obscure abilities that allow them to kind of flourish despite not having as much power as something like a fighting, ghost, psychic, ice, fire, water type. So this one is able to mimic those same typings and kind of withdraw its normal typing in the process. So here I'm just going in, I'm giving it some color. I was throwing around the idea a lot of should it have its own color? Should it have the color of the Pokemon it's mimicking? And I thought if the case is that it's trying to mimic this creature, why not go all out? Maybe instead of just forming itself now, it has the ability to change its color, maybe even change its cry, almost like a different and more evolved or devolved form of a ditto, whereas a ditto can mimic the exact color, shape, size of other Pokemon. This one does the same type of thing, just using these tendrilous arms. I'd be really interested to see kind of what the outcomes of these mimics would look like. Are they all going to look tendrilous? And if that's the case, what would something like a Tangrowth look like? That, that would probably be the most convincing uh, mimic that it could do. I don't know, I feel like I've been really drawn to mimic type Pokemon recently. Maybe it's the whole idea of trying to figure out what my Halloween costume is going to be or things like that. But 
having this Pokemon mimic in this strange, bizarre, and almost grotesque way, I think tells a lot about it. And I think that it makes it seem like a really cool concept. I don't know. And so here we have Derminder, the name coming from Dermis, which is another name for skin, and Minder. Given the fact that skinwalkers are able to mimic the sounds of those even lost by time or sickness, it's a grim reminder. So, Derminder. Instead of the walking Pokemon, it has evolved to become the stalking Pokemon. You'll notice that shiny is a reference not only to itself being shiny in the same way as its previous form, but the Charizard head that it's utilizing as well has become a shiny Charizard, with the flame still showing that same flamish color. It's grown a lot in size since, but you'll notice that the eyes are still roughly about the same size that they were on the previous form to indicate that this, while big and terrifying and absolutely spooky, is kind of just a re-conglomeration of the previous form, intertwining itself in a different fashion. It's gotten a big stat boost from what we saw before and is still normal type because I anticipate that it's going to have some sort of skin related ability that allows it to change types or change shapes in this way. I'd be really interested to see what this thing would look like in battle. So yeah, I'm, I'm pretty pumped with this guy. I think it's a fun and exciting gimmick that evolves from a Pokemon that I can absolutely say is one of my favorite designs. So let me know what you think. By the way, thank you, Faye, for having me on. It's always fun to collaborate, and I've been looking forward to this collaboration for quite some time. So super excited that we were able to work together on these Pokemon designs. Before we proceed, we should say thanks to the program of Supportas that helps this Mystery Channel show to keep going. Thanks for our Thai Bunny, Proud, Brett, and Christopher Catino for the big support, and thanks to all the other partners. Alright, we will cover now a legend that you may have heard before. Presented by an old show, brought by a paranormal magazine called Eyes Open, and it is the legend of... Explorers, where the ships went from travel around the Pokemon world. The old man used to tell stories of all the giant monsters they found in the mysterious seas. Red Gyarados, Giant Dragonite, and what they call as the Lake Monster. All of them are myths that cross generations, but what if they were true all along? We found some diaries from sailors from the past century wrote in world letters they sent. We'll cover specifically the letters of Albion. Storm Hatred's heart tonight. In the midst of it, something enormous were faced, bigger than any Gyarados in Sailor's Tales. Saw so its head rising between the waves, scales shining in the lightning. The men are calling it the Lake Monster. None of us have seen this light before. We barely held course. The beast show himself again. It's time clear. It crashed through the waves. Make our ship to swing in the sea, and we saw it swallowing a whole whaler, but the captain saw it in full, locked eyes with the creature. The look in his face tells me everything, a monster with features that resemble the Barascuda, but made by the devil himself. We're naming it the Lake Monster, when it feels wrong, but it fits with the amount of horror we experience. We flee the waters, in our sailors fading away, help us. The less information we had about this Albion is that the world ship in question was found shipwrecked in an island with a lighthouse. Some corpses were missing, while others had limbs devoured by something. Was it the monster? Or was it their own madness? Brown bear the creature of presence. What makes us independent enthusiasts of mysteries concern about this tale is that a young lad sent us a video of this telephone about the mystery creature, such as describing this story. Your eyes might not believe in what you see. In training, right? Our cryptids artist reconstructed the mysterious creature based on the stories and the footage sent to us. And this is what we expect to the Lake Monster look like. Is it a lost evolution of Barascula? Maybe a paradox Pokemon that we'll never find yet? Only time will see. Meanwhile, keep your eyes open.
The mixtape was sent by Idol Foundation about the most famous myth of Podia, possibly inspired by Chupacabra. Repair your stomach, dear viewer. This one will be shocking, because this story had ending with the missing of an innocent man. We will meet... Hello, Grant from Nider. The new Eutrobis was reported in the last week. It formerly was caused there a rural legend, the ranges of Paldea. However, we found this strong documentation that proved that the legend was actually an Eutrobist. And so, it's our task to study and catalog it, secure, contain, and protect. This is our goal, so keep always aware. Strange incidents be happening in the last 50 years when Marips were found in ranches, completely stunned and extremely weak, to the point their tails are not able to keep shining. They had holes in their bodies, what looks like bat fangs, but much bigger. It seems like of the myth of Chupacabra, a creature that drains the farm Pokemon blood, especially Marips. The phenomenal origin was still an owl, but the previous explanation was a group of Gobats. But now we have a video where we spotted what possibly was the creature that made it. We found a couple of videos recovered in your farm after some investigation. A man, when he three years old, documented his jewelry in the farm of his grandfather, around the cornfield. These were the last information we had from this man. He stays missing. Get back in with y'all tomorrow. It's pretty creepy. Because there this creature has ranked to security level, as it was the first reported case of attacking humans. The information and appearance we will show is purely speculative, which were reconstructed by AVP Technologies Alright Reserve. The family of the man requested us to find him, or even to find his body to have a worthy ceremony. You and two Ultra Recon Squad recruits should collect this Ultra Beast to bring to our laboratory. It should be given to Faba. Best regards, Ider Foundation. These creatures challenge our beliefs. The breaking point between real or imaginary is we to see now, but that's not the end. We have many other creatures to find, like in this other program that will cover other creep creatures. You might tune the channel, but you'll be forever inside the Moonlight Zone. <laughs>